Hello, it's Nico, and today I'm here to share with you how to grow with the help of Richard's book, Hydroponics, which you can find on Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description for you. And so let's dig right into chapter 3. Chapter 3. Choose the right hydroponic system for you. Bear in mind that for many new hydroponic gardeners, it may be a case of trial and error for the first year. It can take time to discover exactly what fits your needs. There may be failures along the way. However, we encourage you to persevere. It will be well worth all the effort because your plants will be bountiful once you succeed. Considering personal circumstances, we have arrived at the point of decision making. Here I want you to look closer at your own situation and how you can decide which hydroponic system will best suit your own lifestyle. I will break this section up with each system. Considering our list of space budget experience time. Space. At the beginning of the book, I wrote about indoor or outdoor hydroponic gardening. If you choose to set up outdoors, without any surrounding protection, your plants will be prone to pest attacks. This can be reduced somewhat if you have a greenhouse to grow your crops. A traditional glass house or a plastic tent tunnel works fine. If you grow your crops indoors, then your plants will be much less prone to pests. However, your space may be more limited indoors. If you are considering growing plants that are not the norm for your climate, then you will either need a greenhouse or grow indoors. If you wish to grow out of season plants, then they will need special care to their environment. In either circumstance, you will need to consider providing artificial lighting, heating and control the humidity. These cannot be set up in the open and must be under a protective covering, such as a greenhouse, or alternatively, indoors. Budget. The complexity of the system you have is also dependent on your available funds. You can begin and should begin with a small, simple system, such as water culture. As you advance, that's when you will begin to spend more. You could put all your equipment together yourself by purchasing each part separately. The only trouble you may find is that you might buy the wrong pieces and end up spending more than you intended. There are ready-made kits available with each system. They will contain the exact materials you will need for that particular hydroponic system. At least that way, you will only be buying the necessary equipment for your project. Although kits tend to be more expensive than the DIY option, in the long run, this could save you money. If you are good at DIY, then you may be able to improvise containers and piping, or even buy second-hand bits and pieces, such as a pond pump. You must clean and disinfect everything thoroughly before use. Experience. Whether you wish to grow specialty plants, or the easier ones, such as lettuces and herbs, the key to growth is always humidity, water temperature, pH levels, nutritional strengths. Get these right, and you should have yourself a bountiful crop. From the initial seeding to caring for the roots, from lighting and all the different ways of measuring levels, it all comes down to practice. If you are already a keen gardener, then you will already have much knowledge needed in caring for plants. The experience of hydroponic gardening will come later, with time and practice. You must consider all these factors though, before deciding which system is best for you. Time. How much time you spend on your self-sufficient garden is up to you. Choose a method that you know will work around your present timetable and lifestyle. The busier you are, then the smaller your system. It stands to reason that the fewer plants you have, the less time needed. As with any garden, you will need to care for your plants. Measuring of varying levels will need to be done. Flushing of systems should be done regularly. To help you choose, I have gone through each hydroponic method to give an idea of all these factors. Space, budget, experience and time. I hope this will help you choose which hydroponic system is the right one for you. Which system works best for you? Drip system space. A basic drip system is achievable for any beginner. It will take up a little more room because there are two large containers. Ideally, the system could sit on a table budget. There is more equipment to buy using this method. You will need at least one circulating pump, a timer, and tubing. You will also want a drip manifold. If the budget is tight, you can make small holes in the tubing instead. This system requires a growing medium. It can be less expensive to run than the water culture or ebb and flow systems. This is because it makes more efficient use of the nutrients, therefore using less. This may not make much difference on a smaller garden. To benefit from this, 
you would need at least 10 plus plants in the system experience. It is a little complicated to set up. This method is more sophisticated than water culture, which can be done in a single bucket. It is also more complex than the ebb and flow to set up. If you are a beginner, it might be better to buy a ready-made kit that has all the right components in one place. Be aware that tubing can become blocked with the excess minerals from the nutrient liquid. Be vigilant of this because your crop could soon dry up and die from not receiving any water. A higher skill level is needed with this system. You need a basic understanding of balancing the concentration of nutrients. You also need a good knowledge of how often the pump should be on and off. Get these wrong and your plants will suffer. If it is not enough, then the roots could be stunted, or even worse, dry out. If it is too much, the roots could rot or grow a fungus. This system relies on electrical power. Make sure you check it periodically and know what to do if it goes off time. There are a few maintenance tasks that will require attention. The flow of nutrients should always be well balanced. Check the pipes often so they don't get blocked. Should the electricity... The whole system will come to a stop. It is vital you check it often because you can lose your entire crop. Each of these issues is very important to the success of your garden. Failure on any of these points and your crop will die. Ebb and flow space. Very similar in space requirements to the drip system. The growing tray should be sitting on a table with a reservoir container underneath so it can make full use of gravity. This system works well indoors budget. To set this system up, you will need to buy some basic equipment, such as a pump tubing, timer and medium experience. It is easy to maintain, once you get the hang of it. However, it can be a little complicated to set up. If DIY is not your thing, then there are ready-made kits to buy containing everything you need. Measuring temperature and pH levels is not quite so important with this method. You should still measure these levels however just not as often time. Nutrient water in the reservoir will need changing every 7-10 days. Also, the system will need a thorough clean. With hydrogen peroxide, after a harvest, it is best to check pH levels daily so you can adjust them if needed. You need to check on a regular basis that the pump is working and the tubing does not become blocked. Nutrient film technique space. The grow tray is usually a gully or channel, so it can be lengthy. You also need space for a reservoir tank that holds the nutrient enriched water. Again, it is better if the grow tray is situated on top and the reservoir below. Like many hydroponic systems, if it is kept small, it can be set up inside budget. As it is a constant flow system, you will need a pump, but a timer is not necessary. It is an inexpensive way to start your hydroponic growing however it is also a little complicated. So be aware, no medium is required. The plants are held in baskets, in a lid with holes so the roots hang out and reach the channel of water. To ensure the reservoir water is well aerated and air stone fed by an air circulating pump is a good option experience. Setting up can be tricky. The grow channels need to be at an angle so the water runs down from one end to the other. If the angle is wrong, then the plants could flood or dry out. You will need to know how to measure pH and temperature levels because these need checking every day time. NFT is easy to maintain with little work required to keep it working well. The biggest job is replacing the nutrient enriched water. This needs to be done every two weeks to ensure the plants are correctly fed. After harvesting, your system will need a thorough clean out. Otherwise, the growing channel and reservoir will build up with harmful bacteria. Suspended roots can grow too long and restrict the flow of water. If this is the case, then you can trim them without harming the plants. It is important to keep the water temperatures cool, at around 68 F. Water culture space. You could start with as little as the space required for a 5 gallon bucket. Everything that you need can be comfortably confined to one container. It can become more elaborate if you wish to extend the system later. One bucket, nutrient water, and a lid with holes in it are all you need to get started on this hydroponic system. Unless you grow individual plants in pots, with the roots suspended in the nutritional water, then you don't even need a growing medium budget. This can be the least expensive system to set up. It can run without a medium by hanging your plants through a hole cut in a lid. It might be better to use small baskets for the roots so the plants have some means of support. You will need to buy medium if you choose to use plant pots for each plant. Unless you are running a larger system, you do not need a water pump. If you start small with the one container, you can grow one four plants in the same system. 
This is what I recommend for the beginner. Start small, then as you gain experience, expand your system experience. Water culture is one of the simplest growing systems. This means that it is easy to set up, even with a limited knowledge. Plants are fast growing in this system because their roots are in the nutritional liquid all the time. No need to worry about researching and choosing the right medium, as it does not need any if you wish to keep it simple. The main things to watch out for are, ensure the water temperature stays at a specific level, around 68 F, to maintain the oxygen and inhibit the growth of harmful bacteria. Keep the container in the shade and out of direct sunlight, if you can. Paint the container white as this helps reflect the heat you will also need to keep your eye on the pH levels and the water you will need to change the nutrients water every 10 days or so. This is essential for keeping the nutrients at a prime level and stop the buildup of harmful chemicals. Start with only one or two plants. As you gain confidence, add to the system. You could add another bucket and introduce a recirculating garden. However, this needs a pump. The water pumps from one bucket to the next so all the buckets are not running on an individual system time. It is simple to set up and can probably be achieved in half a day, depending on the size of your system. Other than periodically checking the temperature and pH levels, the only time consuming task will be changing the water. Each bucket must be given fresh water and nutrients. You can cut down the time spent on this task by using a pump and the recirculating method. Basically, it means the water is pumped from one bucket to the next so all the buckets are not run individually but are using the same water. This way, when you do have to change the water, you only need to concentrate on the main bucket solution mixture. You will still need to drain the whole system but the other buckets will soon fill up from your main bucket flow. Aeroponic space. Not ideal for a beginner as there are few small aeroponic systems. You do need lots of space to make this method worthwhile. Technically, you could do a small garden in a large tub with about 6 plants budget. This is the most expensive system to set up. You are going to need the essentials, such as filters, tubes, and pumps. You must also use high quality nutrients, as low quality ones have more salt residue and are more likely to block the sprayer's experience. The most difficult for a beginner, however, it is probably the system that will yield the most harvest. If you do things wrong. You will lose your entire crop time. High maintenance or your crop will die. Blockages. Needs regular checks that the sprayers do not clog up with minerals from the nutritional liquid. If unattended, the roots will dry up and the plants will die. Temperature. Needs regular temperature checks and water should be at around 64 F. Humidity. Needs constant checking and the levels can vary. That is vegetable or fruit stage should read 60-70%. Flowering stage 30-40%. If it is too much, it will cause algae or rot, and too little will stunt growth or the roots will dry up. Does have a speedy harvest cycle, so if run correctly, then the plants will grow fast. Wick irrigation space. Ideal if you have limited space, particularly if your hydroponic garden is to be indoors. Similar in size to the water culture system and crops can be grown in just one bucket budget. A basic wick system is one of the cheapest hydroponic methods you can use. However, it does need a growing medium and a suitable fabric to use as a wick. For this system, you will need an absorbent growing medium, such as clay, perlite or coir. Plus, you still need to buy the nutrients. The system would benefit from an aeration pump and air stone. If the water is still, nutrients can sink to the bottom of the feeding reservoir experience. Although a seemingly simple arrangement, the wick system is not without its problems. It is easy to set up and get started. It is not very good for larger plants that need lots of water and nutrients. A novice should begin with smaller, quick growing plants. If you are a beginner, stick to herbs or lettuces, because this system will be ideal for such crops. The wick is important and you must use a material that will soak up liquid efficiently. Rope, fabric and felt are useful for this purpose. It may be a case of experimentation, trial, and error. If wicks do not work correctly, then the roots will dry up and the plants will die time. As the wick and medium can become soaked in salt minerals, this system does need regular maintenance. Plants will only soak up the nutrients they need leaving behind all those they don't want. The minerals remain in the wick and medium and can build up. To counteract this, you will need to flush the medium with fresh, clear water, periodically. Plus, you will also need to top up the nutritional water reservoir. 
If you don't use an air pump to create movement in the still water, you will need to stir up the reservoir water. Do this at least a couple of times a day. Okay, so that's it. That's chapter three. Make sure to check back in for the next video. We're going over chapter four. And definitely make sure to like, subscribe. One more thing. Make sure to check out the G3 community website in the link below to get yourself a pre-made hydroponic system and or to check out all of our social media. Thank you for your time, Unifiers.